All right, so here we are. We're now in this special room right here. <laughs> Where nobody can hear us, that's right. Just me and this red-tailed hawk plush doll right here. So, here's the thing. I'm absolutely obsessed with red-tailed hawks. This is not something that everybody can do. I want to go into falconry. Now, my family would think, you're absolutely crazy. You're nuts. Why would you want to do such a thing? You're going way over your head. Well, let me assure you, I'm not going way over my head. I'm going to be a falconer. And that's a true fact. Let me tell you something. I wasn't always interested in red-tailed hawks. When I was a kid, I liked parrots. I thought they were really cool, they were, they were really intelligent. I used to watch videos about them all the time. And... So I watched videos of them all the time. I, I just kept watching them over and over again. I've heard of this African gray parrot called Ezra the Parrot. Like it could just say a whole bunch of different words. I used to just go through lots of like audio clips of this parrot. And then I saw a budgie up in Canada. You may know him very well. This budgie knew like over 2,000 words. In fact, this budgie was so intelligent, it even knew parrot, or it even knew words that the owner didn't even know. Like, you could even read words out of a dictionary. It was just that smart. And then I kind of lost my interest for parrots eventually. Um, I, I started watching dancing bird videos on YouTube. I just started getting into them again. And I was watching this parrot rapping Flo Rida's song, Love. And it was just so amazing. This This parrot had to be very intelligent in order to do the lyrics like exactly like that. And you know, I, I watched a whole bunch of Dancing Bird videos up until the day that my J. Herzl 88 account got hacked. And then I kind of just started getting into other things. I, I started feeding the birds in my backyard and it was a lot of fun. I put leftovers out. I just wanted to see how many different items that these birds could eat. I started getting into house sparrows first. I started feeding them Girl Scout cookies when I was living in my mom's house. And I just went into this rundown neighborhood and started just putting little, these little Girl Scout crackers across the street. For some reason they wouldn't eat the big crackers, but they would eat the little ones. They would eat it if it were in pieces. And then I also saw a crow grab one while I was walking. It didn't allow me to get too close though. But I was able to see the house bears get pr pretty close to me when I was putting them out. And then that's when I really started getting to feed them. I started putting my mom's cupcakes in the forest behind her house. And then I started getting really obsessed into them and started picking out food from the trash. I had this trash obsession. I just couldn't stand food being thrown away. So I picked out all the food from the trash, and I put it all outside. And then I started feeding margarita cupcakes to the birds too. They didn't have much alcohol in them, only like one little drop per cupcake. So it, was, it wouldn't be harmful for them at all. But I wanted them to see them eat unique food items, food items that would be like really good and tasty, you know what I mean? And then later, my mom got very upset and she said, don't do this anymore. And she was very upset about it and I got so upset. She, she just wanted to watch me like all the time, make sure I wasn't trying to put the trash out. 
And then I got so mad that I wanted to put bleach and laundry detergent on all the cupcakes to try to kill all the birds that ate them because I was afraid that they were so used to eating the food items that they, they were conditioned to only eat those items. But I was wrong and actually they didn't even eat them. I went out the next morning and not a single cupcake was out of place. Everything was exactly as I had put them. So I just scraped it off the tree branch, threw it on the garbage. And then I, and then that was it. I decided to move in with, at my grandparents' house after that. I couldn't take it anymore after that. And then I started feeding them again. I, I, I fed the crow. There were crows at my, my lawn. There were house sparrows and starlings for the most part. Your typical table scrap eaters. Um, I put out everything you can think of. I put out popcorn, I put out meat, I put french fries, um, sometimes occasionally some vegetables, and I even put Reese's Pieces and cupcakes out too. Yep, I put vanilla cupcakes, chocolate, red velvet, you name it. Um, the crows would eat the cupcakes, the starlings would eat the cupcakes, the sparrows wouldn't eat the cupcakes though. Uh, the star, the starlings would eat the vanilla cupcakes, not the chocolate cupcakes. The crows would take the chocolate cupcakes and actually um, store them behind the lawn um, across the street from my neighbor's house. Um, and they also took the meat items too. The meat items were the most popular. Like if you put out meat out, the crows were there in like seconds. All right. So I continued to feed them for a few years up until the point where my camera broke in the rain and I couldn't do that anymore. And I, did, I wasn't feeding them as often anymore, but then all of a sudden um, there were cats crossing the road getting killed by cars and whatever. And my grandma had too many cats on her front lawn and animal control had to come in and put a stop to it. So my bird feeding came to an end after that because they felt that my my food items would attract more cats to our house. These were all stray cats. Like they didn't even live around here. They just came over to my grandma's porch and just start eating whatever food items that she put out for them. So then um, after I stopped doing that, I got into like crows and ravens. I started watching a lot of interesting videos about like how intelligent crows are. You know, that's supposedly they are the most intelligent animal next to dolphins and humans. Yes, they have the same brain to body mass as apes and chimpanzees, which is kind of interesting. They can make tools to, to grab food, and they know how to look both ways when crossing the street. That's one of the first things that they teach their young, in fact. And they also store valuable items. They can store coins pennies, what, whatever, whatever. They like collecting shiny stuff. I mean, we don't know why, they just like collecting things. And then, um, you know, I liked seeing them eat table scraps. Uh, you know, I, I started watching YouTube videos of them doing those things. And then I saw my very first red-tailed hawk video. A red-tailed hawk video eating bread. I posted it on a playlist and kept it on the very top of my channel page for all the time that I've been watching Red-Tailed Hawk videos. That was the video that started it all. A video that was taken in Philly, it's just called Red-Tailed Hawk Eating Bread. It's the very first video on that playlist. That video inspired me to get into Red-Tailed Hawks because in order for it to get to that bread, it had to have being able to hunt another bird that possibly had dropped it there. It could perhaps have been from another crow. Another crow may have had that piece of bread. And sometimes what happens is they may mistake the bread for prey because usually crows do eat baby birds out of nests and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, just very interesting. Um,